Hi, I'm Yashika from Besen Technologies. We saw about the basic of computer, computer system and about networking in the last video. So if you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the comment section. We will respond to you. So and if you want to learn further, please contact the nearest Besen Technologies branch. So today in this video, we are going to see about the history of AWS and also how to create an AWS account. So first, what is the history of AWS? Cloud computing is still in day one. There is so much of things that we can do. The person who said this is Andy Jassy. He is the CEO of AWS. So now what happens in AWS is there is no long term commitment or there is no agreement in this. Say for example, if you want to create a web page, you need to have load balancers, application servers, database servers, accelerators and numerous other things so when you move on with AWS there's no sort of commitment or relationship or agreement with them so you can use whatever you needed from AWS and end it once you're once you're done experimenting with it so it's as easy as that so now before we move on to other details let's see how this AWS has emerged over the years the history of AWS the first thing was in 2000 2002. It was when the AWS platform was first launched. It was in 2002. Then in 2003, the idea of selling the servers as a service in the cloud was first formulated by AWS. In 2004, the first AWS service was released that is SQS, that it was released to the public. The SQS is nothing but the simple queue service. Then in 2006, AWS was officially relaunched with three main services, S3 Simple Storage Service, SQS Simple Queue Service and EC2. Next in 2008, Microsoft and Google, the competitors also so enter the cloud so the competition is increased in 2009 VPC was introduced VPC is nothing but virtual private cloud so a private partition of the AWS data centers was lent to the customers so it is one of the major breakthrough of AWS next in 2012 the first reInvent conference was launched. Reinvent is nothing but an AWS developer conference. It is held yearly in Las Vegas from 2012 until date. It is a yearly event that that uh, that is conducted in Las Vegas. So they tell about the new AWS services launch, talk about what is new in AWS, what is happening in Amazon and all such. Then uh, in 2012, in the same year, Redshift was introduced. Redshift is nothing but Amazon's petabyte scale data warehousing service. So that is one of the huge success of AWS. Then in 2003, the CIA moved on to AWS, a Central Intelligence Agency of America. They were initially with IBM and they moved to AWS and that is one major breakthrough. Then in 2015 what happened is AWS for the very first time released their profit. That is their profit was about 4.6 billion in 2014 and they expected a growth of about 49% that is 6.2 billion in 2015. In 2017 we have about 100 services and in 2019 you know about the various services and the certifications and also about the demand for AWS these days now once now we are clear about the history of AWS now before moving on further let me tell you how to create an AWS account it is very simple you can directly log on to the Amazon AWS site it directly asks us either to sign in or create a new account the first step so all you need is only a valid email ID this you cannot give a dummy email ID because it has to you need to have you need to have a valid email 
ID because all your communications will be sent through that email ID. So once you click on create a new account, it will ask you to enter your email ID. Enter a valid email ID that is called as the root account address or root account. Then enter a password. So once you are done with that, it will ask us to enter a valid AWS account name. You can give any valid account name. Say I can give Besson Technologies. So once you are done with that, it will ask you to choose your account type. That is there are two types, personal and professional. Since we are using it for our purpose, uh, for study purpose, you can choose personal. Then in your next page, it's going to ask your address and phone number and your credit card details. So for one year, it's going to be free and after one year, you will be charged. So then you have to just enter the CAPTCHA code and do verify. So once you're done with all these steps, the last step would be it will ask you to choose a support plan. There are four support plan, basic, developer, support and enterprise, four plans. This is also a major exam question. What are the support plans available in AWS? You click on basic because we are going to do for our practice purpose. Click on basics and once you hit on create, it will land you in an AWS page. So once you are able to sign in with your email ID and password, you are into AWS now. Thank you.